So in this short video, I'm going to go through sort of a 30,000 foot overview of lipid metabolism. And one of the important things to consider is um, we are going to want to consider what the sources are for these, whether it's an exogenous or dietary source or an endogenous uh, source, something we already have in our body. But the key here is once we can sort of funnel those into our monomer molecule, in this case fatty acids that are inside cells, then the sort of metabolism process uh, doesn't matter whether it was an exogenous or an endogenous source. So let's talk first. We're going to have exogenous sources, which again are dietary. And then we're going to have endogenous sources, okay, which in this case, if we're talking about lipids and specifically triglycerides and fatty acids, that's going to be an adipose tissue. Okay, but the key here is that once we get these into our cells, it really doesn't matter where they were derived from. So again, having fatty acids or triglycerides that are intracellular it's not going to matter sort of what their origin story was. So on this kind of high level slide, we're going to talk about sort of the opposing pathways for lipid metabolism. We're going to have fatty acid breakdown, which is beta oxidation. And on the next slide, we'll sort of walk through the overall sort of equation for both beta oxidation and then the opposing pathway, which is fatty acid synthesis. But the end product of beta oxidation or the starting product for fatty acid synthesis is acetyl-CoA. So again, fatty acids are going to be broken down by beta oxidation to acetyl-CoA. And then if we've got excess acetyl-CoA, that is going to be assembled into fatty acids through the process of fatty acid synthesis. Okay, so let's talk first about sort of what happens if we are in a need state, okay? So once I finish this, we'll sort of highlight the path that we have here for our need state, okay? But when we have sort of um, acetyl-CoA that is obtained by the beta oxidation or the breakdown of fatty acids, there's a couple of things that can happen. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about um, the liver for the most part here, but this has to do with whether or not we are uh, global or local here. So one option, and again, this is the only option or the only place where this can happen is the liver, is we can synthesize acetyl-CoA into ketone bodies. And this is key if we are going to be having a global use. So in this case, if we are in a global need state, liver can actually uh, take uh, fat-derived acetyl-CoA, we can assemble it into ketone bodies, export it, circulate throughout the bloodstream, and any cells who need uh, energy can take in those ketone bodies, make them immediately into acetyl-CoA, and do sort of the local um, piece here, which is to take acetyl-CoA and then go through the citric acid cycle, electron transport, oxidative phosphorylation, ultimately generating ATP. But again, this is for local use, okay? So this is sort of the pathway that we're going to be referring to when we're talking about the need state. So beta oxidation, either for local or global use, okay? Fatty acids broken down by beta oxidation to acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA, depending on whether it's going to be used locally or exported globally as ketone bodies, are going to uh, determine those possible fates for acetyl-CoA. Flip side, then, is if we are talking about sort of a fed state. So fed state here. Okay. Fed state. Okay. In this case, we're really talking about taking excess acetyl-CoA, and it's important to highlight here, this excess acetyl-CoA can come from excess levels of carbohydrates or excess levels of amino acids. Specifically, we know ketogenic amino acids can be made into acetyl-CoA. So when we have excess acetyl-CoA, so excess acetyl-CoA is going to go through fatty acid synthesis. It's going to make fatty acids, which can be assembled into triglycerides, and ultimately stored in adipose tissue. Okay, 
So in the next slide here, just a blank slide, I want to go through sort of the overview of the uh, main steps that we have for both beta oxidation, which is our need state pathway when we're uh, breaking down fatty acids and generating acetyl-CoA, and then our fed state pathway where fatty acid synthesis is going to take excess acetyl-CoA and then remake it into fatty acids that are stored. Okay, so first again, let's talk about our need state. And what's happening in need state is beta oxidation. So that was everything that we had in red on our previous slide. Okay, so here's kind of the main equation that we're going to have here. Okay, fatty acids, we're going to need some FAD and NAD plus. Okay, because we're going to be undergoing um, oxidation reactions. Okay, and then we're also going to be breaking those apart. But the net is that we're going to generate acetyl CoA and then FADH2 and NADH. So just kind of mapping on here so we can see where all of these pieces kind of come in. We're going to have fatty acids that are ultimately converted into acetyl-CoA. And that's because we're going to do these steps of oxidation, hydration, oxidation, cleavage. And you're gonna see that in just a little bit when we talk about the detailed steps of beta oxidation. And then if we're doing a lot of oxidation, something must be coupled as a reduction. And that is the generation of FADH2 and NADH, okay? So that's what happens under need state and beta oxidation. Fed state, again, this is gonna be when we've got excess acetyl-CoA. This is excess acetyl-CoA that is derived from carbohydrates and proteins. That is going to lead to fatty acid synthesis. I should have highlighted too that beta oxidation is going to be four steps, okay, and it occurs in the mitochondria, okay, and it's aerobic. So pretty much any time we delve into the mitochondria, we're going to be considering ourselves to be in an or an in an aerobic state, okay. So when we think about fatty acid synthesis, okay. Um, it's going to be a seven-step process, and that's seven steps that basically happen um, on a single enzyme that has seven sort of domains. We're going to get to the fatty acid synthase machine in just a little bit. It occurs in the cytosol, and we technically can uh, define it as an anaerobic process because it's occurring in the cytosol. So let's talk about sort of what those details are. And there's a lot to this, so I think I'm going to stack my... Um, reactants and products kind of one above one another so I'm able to better sort of connect them. So this is when we have, again, excess acetyl-CoA. So highlighting this is we must have excess acetyl-CoA for this process to be happening. Okay, we're going to need to have bicarbonate and ATP and then some NAD pH. Okay. So we will get into the details of how this happens, but ultimately having acetyl-CoA, bicarbonate, and some money, okay, this is going to generate our fatty acids, okay, and then CO2, and then we've used that ATP, so we're going to generate ADP, okay, so this piece really is our money. As we're going to see, this is going to be our carbon source. And what we're going to see is we need to add on a CO2 so that we can eliminate it and make a nucleophile, okay? And then what we're going to have here is we are going to have carbon-carbon bond formation, okay? We need these NADPHs as a source of electrons. And so the last product that we have here is NADP+. So this is going to be our electron source and remember that's we're thinking of that being the glue to sort of hold things together the last piece i just want to map onto here is a reminder of what the rate controlling either steps 
or processes are that sort of happen here. So I'm just going to move this piece down just to be able to have some room here. So when we're talking about our need state beta oxidation, the rate determining step is the influx of fatty ACL-CoA into the mitochondria. So the influx of fatty ACL that has been appended to CoA into the mitochondria. So if that process is happening, we are going to be oxidizing and breaking down those fatty acids. Let's make sure to highlight this stuff was in blue on our previous slide. Okay, fatty acid synthesis is going to occur into, in a fed state. And so when we think about the rate determining step for this, this is actually the enzyme ACC, which stands for acetyl-CoA carboxylase. So to give you a brief overview of what that's doing, we're going to take some of our acetyl-CoA and attach another carbon atom to it as CO2 and make something called malonyl-CoA. So malonyl-CoA, once it decarboxylates, will be our nucleophile. It's going to be reacting with other acetyl-CoA, that's our electrophile, and that's how we're going to couple those carbon atoms together. So we'll go into a lot of detail in some future videos here on the chemistry for how that fatty acid synthesis process occurs. So need state beta oxidation, fed state fatty acid synthesis, again, doesn't matter where we get sort of those uh, sources of acetyl-CoA or fatty acids from, kind of this intracellular process biochemically is the same.